The San Francisco 49ers are in a great spot right now. They just dropped a staggering 45 points on the Arizona Cardinals head. Not to mention the Cowboys lost and the Eagles could be without Jalen Hurts on Monday Night Football against the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, this remaining schedule for San Francisco is very, very good. They've got Baltimore at home, which is going to be tough, but it will also give us a preview of how ready the 49ers are for the Super Bowl because the Ravens are the number one seed in the AFC. But after that, the worst defense in the NFL in the Washington Commanders, and then the Los Angeles Rams, who are playing some good football right now, but we know historically speaking that the Niners own the Rams and you know they beat them both games last year. They beat them this year back in week two in uh, Los Angeles, of course. So I want to talk about Brock Purdy, though, because he has just been absolutely sensational this season he threw for four more touchdowns in this game 242 yards i mean purdy people continue to hate on him man it's just getting ridiculous at this point all he's done is put up good numbers he's first in the league in qbr he's fourth in passing tied for third in touchdowns he's actually gonna jump ahead of i want to say dak prescott i'm not sure if these numbers are updated but um dak did not have a touchdown pass purdy just had four more so i think the mvp is clear I do think that it should go to Purdy because, yeah, like I get the roster talented and all, but that's because of Purdy, right? Like Purdy is just as much to give credit to as Kyle Shanahan or Christian McCaffrey or Debo, Ayuk, Kittle, right? The defense, you know, Steve Wilkes, like Purdy deserves as much credit. He's the quarterback. He's handling, you know, every single play and he's just accurate. He doesn't turn the ball over. He gets it into his guy's hands. I mean, Purdy is one of the best quarterbacks ever. In the history of this franchise and that's saying a lot because they've had some good ones obviously you know purdy he's the best quarterback that the niners have had since i would say the 90s like he's been that good and he's only 23 years old but he just continues to get better and better every single game and then christian mccaffrey decided to go with him on the thumbnail for obvious reasons he added in three more touchdowns uh, you know went over I guess almost went over 200 yards from scrimmage, had 115 rushing, 72 receiving. Of course, had a 41-yard you know, catch and score, which was just awesome to see. You know, 26-yard run. McCaffrey, the explosive plays have been there all season long. Jordan Mason did get five carries. Only five carries is a little bit concerning because obviously Eliza Mitchell was not active in this game so McCaffrey just continues to get all the work I guess the Niners just don't want to go away from him because whenever you put the ball in his hands they're just a much better team so that's fair George Kittle two for 54 and then you have Debo four for 48 with those two touchdowns Brandon Ayuk three for 37 this is the one thing with the Niners offense is there's just too many mouths to feed so we saw Ayuk be the odd man out today he did have a 22 yard catch but which was nice you know went through some contact but outside of that just a quiet game for Ayuk. I did not start him in this game in fantasy. Of course, playoffs on the line. There's just something about the Niners where there's always going to be an odd man out. We're not going to see Kittle, Samuel, and Ayuk all go off. I mean, I guess against the Eagles, they did. That would be fair, but you know, it's just not really going to happen. There's just because like McCaffrey too was the guy that caught two touchdowns out of the backfield as a receiver. So, but I'm not complaining about that. That's obviously a good thing. You know, 262 yards for these Niners, you know, uh, receivers. No turnovers for the offense, which is great. Defensively speaking, Fred Warner was fantastic, had eight solo tackles. Of course, we also saw sacks from Javon Kinlaw, Chase Young, Nick Boza. Fred Warner also was in on us half of a sack. And I mean, Warner has just been absolutely unreal this season. I mean, he is, you look at his rankings, right? So he's tied for 15th in solo tackles. He's got two sacks, three forced fumbles, four picks which is tied for fourth, yet he's a linebacker, right? You know, anchoring the middle of this defense. It's just, Werner has been fantastic. And it's just crazy because the Niners drafted all of these players and just continued to develop them. That's my favorite thing about the Niners is we talk about all these guys. Now, obviously they traded for McCaffrey, but you know, Purdy, Debo, right? Ayuk, Kittle, you know, even going out there, of course, and you know, the defense, right? With Warner and with Boza and, and just all these studs, man. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy to see how far they've come in the Niners. I mean, it's easy to forget that they've had some bad seasons, you know, Jimmy, you know, being injured and things like that. And they just continue to hit on these picks. John Lynch deserves a lot of credit. But he's also gone out in trades, right? Emmanuel Sanders and Chase Young and Christian McCaffrey. And he's, he's added in the, the right amount of uh, talent around the youth that he's drafted and developed. So definitely credit to him. Obviously, Kyle Shanahan, too. And yeah, just going out there and scoring 45 against the Cardinals. This was the type of game that the Niners could have slept through. I mean, they've won some big games lately. 
and all of a sudden they're on the road in Arizona against a team that to this point is just playing for next season but you know they didn't take their foot off of the gas I mean the first half they scored 21 points second half they scored 28 points so it's good to see and um, yeah the third quarter was definitely beautiful man I mean the Niners were cooking there and yes yeah, in terms of the standings obviously the Niners are gonna be the number one seed in the NFC uh, with that of course 11 and 3 record the Eagles who play on Monday Night Football as I mentioned earlier against the Seahawks could be without Jalen Hurts so if they lose that would be massive for the Niners I mean they do have the tiebreaker over Philly but Philly has the easiest schedule in terms of I guess percentage so that's something to monitor Dallas has the Dolphins on the road next week so I mean to this point Dallas just basically killed themselves out of that uh, number two seed which is brutal because they're gonna have to go on the road against the winner of the NFC South and then more importantly they're gonna have to go on the road against the San Francisco 49ers or whoever wins the one seed and Dallas is just bad flat out bad on the road all three of their losses have come on the road I mean this is an offense that the past five games was putting up 40 a night over 300 passing but again on the road against buffalo against a good team nothing to show for it. i mean i think to this point we can i'm not going to say we can count out the cowboys but at the same time it's like is dallas truly a super bowl contender right if they can't win on the road and they can't be good teams how the hell are you a contender philadelphia i still think has life but they're just flat up not playing high level football the niners are playing their best football of the season so and then like Detroit, I think is like, I don't know, that just the Niners, it's theirs to lose, man. I mean, every year I feel like I'm saying it's the Niners to lose. Hopefully they don't lose it. But that's the thing with having Brock Purdy. If Jimmy G, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo was the quarterback right now, I would be second guessing myself, being like, Oh, that's how the Niners can lose it. But with Purdy, I just feel confident, especially with Trent Williams and Debo out there. I mean, nobody is beating the Niners, man. I mean, it's just not happening. So um the wildcard teams are interesting. I mean, the Niners are gonna have a first round bye, but like, I think legitimately the Rams could beat the Dallas Cowboys. I legit, I do. I think they could also beat the Eagles. I think the Rams are, not to say the Rams are like this incredible team, but Hall of Fame quarterback, Sean McVay, right? Weapons and Puka and Cup and Marcus Robinson, Higby and Kyron Williams. And then the defense is playing so well. I mean, yeah, don't count out the Rams. Um, also, like the Vikings, I don't think are going to be able to make a lot of noise here. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's no one else in the nfc that i would be afraid of so that's pretty much it i mean just san francisco they they go out there and they put up you know 45 points that's just awesome to see defense did give up 29 points but kyler murray threw two picks at just 211 yards a touchdown took three sacks you'll live with that i mean the thing for the niners is they did give up 234 yards on the ground which is concerning i mean james connor had 86 yards it's not even necessarily 86 yards it's just 44 of a long right 49 for the mercado murray you know 15 carter 19 i mean i didn't even know michael carter was on the cardinals 